So hi folks, uh, welcome to another 5 Minute Football. Brendan's just nipped out for a minute because we've got a special guest on with the legend that is Alan Hudson and it's Dave Courtney who is the expert on football. Enlighten us with your football knowledge. Well, just... listen, listen, my football knowledge can be written on the back of a postage stamp. Right? <laughs> I just wasn't going to lose the opportunity to sit beside this a gentleman legend. here. Yeah. yeah, really true, a real one. Yeah. And just ask a couple of little questions such as... I know, I know you drank, you was in the, the, the drinking culture of football, is that right? Do you think, had you had a stricter regime of the non-alcohol, you would have been a better player? Do you think that actually affected Georgie Best, you, Oscar, you know? Do you think it affected you? Could you have been better players if you didn't drink, really? No, I, I think uh, drinking made me a better player, actually. If that makes any sense, you can. I, I remember when Lou Macari took over Stoke City. He he, he was a teetotaler, and uh, but he was a massive gambler. And I always said that I prefer my players to drink than gamble because you can sweat drink out. You can't sweat a gambling bill out, especially in them days. You know, there's no alcohol is you know. George Best, would you ever have known in them days he'd had a drink, you know? Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, we wouldn't know, no, no, the no, general no. public wouldn't know. Well, the, I, I, don't, I think the general public don't really give a monkeys what players do on a Monday to Friday, do they? They really give yeah. monkeys what they do on a Saturday afternoon. I mean, yeah. you see people go to a football ground, they don't care what we did on all week, no. who we yeah. was with, was, whatever we were drinking, or I, and people say to me now, Oh, you used to go out on a Friday night and have a drink and all that. I said, yeah, I didn't do bad though, did I? On and Saturday. smoked. Well, I never, I, I, there's one thing I never smoked, but people do smoke. Oh, yeah. Yoan killed Johan Cruyff, bless him. You know, um, he smoked like, you know. And George Best is famous for having a shag at half time. Well, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, well, um, yeah. Is it that actually well, true? Yeah. Is that a true story? Well, wouldn't it, it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, yeah. It wouldn't surprise me. I, I really don't. I don't think the players are any fitter now than what we were. You can only run 100 yards so, so quick. Yeah. And I don't think that. I can, I, I can honestly say that in my life uh, it affected me about three times yeah. over doing it on a Friday night. <laughs> because I was, un, cause I was unhappy and I was. I, I was in a good. I weren't in a good place at that time, and I, I, I turned to alcohol, and it didn't do me any good. But drinking in general, I could have a drink on. A, I never used to drink much on a Friday night, but I used to drink all week, and it never affected. Thursday night in London mm -hmm. was uh, White City Dogs yeah, yeah. and mm -hmm. Stan Bowles and Don Shanks mm -hmm. and me and Cromwell until two o'clock. Mm -hmm and go training on Friday morning, yeah. train well, and get ready for Saturday. Talks I don't, about, see, yeah, what about, get, I don't yeah. see what the big deal no. was of it. I mean, how about the boys that used to, when I was a kid, my old man, my, my old man didn't drink, but all his teammates, they'd be in the pub to, in parties till four or five in the morning, be there at half past ten and play, and play well. Because yeah. you, know, you, you never partied, that. Dave, did you? You didn't party at all. I'm afraid I am Mr. Party. Yeah, I've got a nightclub at my house. You would love it. It's been my <laughs> down. Oh, I've got a nightclub. <laughs> even your bad ankle. Even that. your bad ankle. Oh, right. You forget that's that's another thing you used to forget about your injuries when you were. Yeah. Right. Have you got any football tips for uh, Alan at all? You know, did you play, uh, Dave? Were you a football? No, player? no, I wasn't actually a very good. I'm not a great team. Um, yeah. Player, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm all right in charge. I'm pretty good leader material of, of a team, but I'm not a good, be a good team. manager. You'd be a good manager. I'm a good manager, yeah. Yeah. But I'm not a great team um, thing. I don't if, so, if you was a footballer, who would you want to be? I'd like to be an Harris. <laughs> yeah, an Harris. Ron, Ron Harris. Yeah. yeah, I'd like to be. I'd like to Chopper. be tougher. Yeah. No. Why would you want to be that? Because I, I, I think my um, um, natural flair would be to, yeah, and I think that's where it would most probably be at its best. Would yeah. you would you take a knuckle duster on the pitch? Would that be? Oh, let's not be childish here. Let's not be childish. <laughs> Let me ask you. But as we're talking about 
as we're talking about punching people, I don't know if it was it was it was in your era, but how did the actual players feel about the football violence that was going on? I'm just saying, as a man, as as, as a supporter standing in one end of a football ground with 15,000 people going, yeah, like that is sexual, it's only, and, and, it, and it brings out a testosterone-y, what's it, and I understood the, 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 the fighting thing, but as a, as a footballer, I know you can't publicly be seen to go, well, yes, I liked to hear that the <laughs> um, Chelsea boys won, you know, I mean, they weren't chased down the road by Man United or chased out the pub by West Ham. You must have wanted you know, the headhunters to have won their little confrontation. They've paid and watched you have your one. You must have wanted them to win, surely. Well, I hate to think, uh, you know, that we beat Leeds in the Saturday afternoon and then Leeds beat us off the field afterwards. That would be quite hurtful. <laughs> I'd like our boys to smash the Leeds to pulp, really. I mean, there's no, there's absolutely no, you're beautiful. There, there's no love between uh, Chelsea and Leeds, and, it, and that's the way it is. And if they want to, I, I remember being, I'm, I'm, I wasn't brought up on violence and that in that kind of way or whatever. And, but I remember as a kid being at Stamford Bridge and being in the shed, and all these Leeds fans were put in the shed behind us, and I was only. I think I was an apprentice at Chelsea at the time, or well, going on 14, 15. I wasn't really a Chelsea supporter, I was a Fulham supporter. What I was doing there, probably went down with my mates to watch Leeds play, it's about 60,000 people, and we got raided by coins, you know, and they was hitting people in there, and I thought, what's all this about, you know? So I can understand that's, from then on, I wanted to beat them on the field, and I wanted our fans to beat them off the field. That's what I was and that, and that is. That's probably where it all comes from, you know. And fans, I, I remember as a kid, Chelsea fans, my family, my uncles, and all of them going up to Coventry and think, and they used to talk about going in a certain place at Coventry and they won <laughs> that battle. And they, you know, they yeah, didn't go well, up there for a fight, yeah. but if they wanted one, they'll get one. Yeah. So it was all part of the football, wasn't it? It was all, it was, you know, the fantasy, uh, I mean, what was Martin's book? When Martin the Hooli fan, Hooli fan. No, no, the the film. Uh, the football factory. I was in the football factory. Yes, it did. I done yeah. the cup draw, didn't I, with Peter Osborne? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. When they done, they yeah. drew Millwall and said, "Oh, that'd be a good game." Yeah. So, because Dave, you know a few uh, football hooligans. Yeah, I do. I do. I'm, I know Colton Legion. I know the Jason Mariners and Cat. Oh, I know Jason. Yeah, yeah, I met yeah, him in Thailand. Yeah, 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 he's cool. He's, there, he's loving it out there. I know. I know he's he living the dream. I, I know. Spoke to him. The David Tyler Boy, yes. Dream. <laughs> <laughs> He's living the actual dream. Yeah. 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 But um, the, the two of you share a, a, an interesting thing: is that both of you ended up in a coma. And so, so yeah. how, what happened with all that? Can, do you remember? Did you have flashbacks of things that you thought things? You I don't know whether it was imagined or. Pre premonitions of things that was happening while you was in a coma? Because I know I did, while I was in that little coma for seven weeks. Weren't a little coma. No, no, it weren't a little coma. Quite a big coma. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but, and, it, and it makes me, you know? Well, I think, I th yeah, I, I, I did. I mean, I was I was out for eight and a half weeks and... Um, it's I a bigger coma. <laughs> yes, it, it's a, I mean, You know, I was still living. I was on life support. We were on life support. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're not dead, so yeah. something's going on. You know, and and not even the not even the medical staff know that what's going on yeah, in here, yeah, do they? Yeah, you know. So, don't. but I I did. I I was moving. I was drifting from from Seattle. I was going from Seattle to London to Stoke. In while I was in, in the know, coma, yeah. and meeting people that yeah. that afterwards would come true, and, right. and even went back to my accident, which was which, which wasn't, wasn't an accident, accident. Yeah. and yeah. and it, it it proved a lot of it in my dream proved that 
you know, that I was still, yeah. although I was on life support, I don't know how this works, how, yeah. the, how it works up here, but yeah. this actually eventually came true. Amazing, yeah. Did, so did we you were have that? This, uh, well, yeah, yeah, very much so. I yeah. remember when I was first, when I first was in the coma, I remember hearing the actual priest in the intensive care saying to me, you know, he's in no pain, he's going to the other place, you know, I was baptised, my mum had me baptised while I was in, and I could hear him saying it while I was in the coma, and I remember it was like trying to run round inside my head and open an eye to let him see I was all right, or move a finger, yeah, or yeah. do something to let him know I was all right in here, just, um, you know, you I felt like I was, out. yeah, I felt like I was all right, and I wanted to let them know I was all right, but outside you like that, you know what I mean? Who were you talking to when you were in your coma? Who were your mates? Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> we both had, we both had a very um, not nice experience where both of our accidents, yeah. we know that they weren't accidents. Yeah. Trying to explain that to someone else makes you look like uh, a fool, or you feel silly doing it, but. Mine wasn't an accident, and yeah. I know you, I yeah. believe nor, nor was you, but trying to explain that to someone else, they just boo-hoo it. You don't I think, know what, I think what it is, Dave, as well, is that it makes, you know, you almost feel like a fraud yourself. Yeah. Are they thinking that they think that you're making it up. Yeah, you're an idiot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you're not. Mm. You know, who'd want to make it up? No. Who, who on earth would want to make that up? I mean... Why would you do that? It, it's but it did. It, that's what happens, I suppose. There's people that have been in, in. How many people that know you've been in a coma? There's different kinds of comas in a life support. I don't really understand the lot of it, but some people never come out of it. No. Yeah. You know, to tell the story. But yeah. we are two people that have yeah. been in one. And lucky. Well, well, did you think they were going to switch you off at one point? Yeah, I, 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 I was with my lady and. and I remember watching a program about someone that kept their wife on life support for 15 years okay. because if she died, he didn't get any of her money. So he <laughs> kept her on life support for 15 years so he could live off of her money. And I was saying, I said to my missus, that, and at the time, she was a proper little lady that I genuinely believed. Yeah. I went, mate, you know, do something, turn the plug off. If, it, if I get like that, yeah. you know, I've got a little fact of that gentleman over there that. Yeah. Now I've gone and ruined it because you get done for murder if that ever happens to me. But if it gets like that, I hope someone loves me enough yeah. to turn the... Or I went, just pull the plug out of it. And she, and she went, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I went, no, listen, babe, tell me the truth. If that happens to me, promise me you'll pull the plug out. You won't let that me be like that and let people come and visit me that don't even like me just to see me like that. You know what I mean? And she went, look, look at me. She went, I promise you I'll pull the plug out. <coughs> I never thought of that conversation for about two years until <laughs> I'm in the coma, I'm right out on the outside, and I can keep hearing her voice going, I promise you, I'll pull the plug out. And I'm thinking to myself, keep away from the fucking plug hole. And I'm in there like, I was alive. I was running about in here trying to let you know I'm okay, but I just kept hearing her voice going, I promise you, I'll pull the plug out. And I'm thinking, fuck away from the plug hole. <laughs> But did, did you meet Elvis when you were there? I did, yeah, I was listening to Elvis on, yeah. on the time of the accident, singing away. Whether you believe this or not, it was all shook up, but I'm singing away on the motorway. And somebody pit manoeuvred me while I was doing under my an hour on the A2, which was supposed to be all camera up, but they said they'd lost all the footage of the camera. They said there was a plainclothes policeman just happened to be driving down the road that took 13 witness statements, but they've lost all the statements. It's all going check up a ball. And they pick manoeuvred me, just ping me. I was actually taking the police to court at the time. Um, I'd been paying a policeman, the policeman had actually said he was paying me. Had, had that been believed, I'd have been shot. It was found later on that I got not guilty, the copper got five years. I still back my off over that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> if ever I can't get an hold on, I'll bang one off over that. But, you know, and then I took the police to court for, I went to the High Court of Justice with Martin Brunt from Sky TV and uh, nicked them for attempted murder, saying, you said that about me and it was proved not. So I'm saying, you're trying to get me killed. And um, while I'm waiting for this court case to happen, that they couldn't have won, 
pint and mysteriously gets run over. You know, um, which, like I, like I said, it's more embarrassing running around saying that they've done that to me. You sound like an idiot. You sound like a fool. But that is what happened. So, yeah. so can yeah. I ask, um, Alan, would you have liked to have been a gangster uh, like Dave? And Dave, would you like to have been a footballer? Would you like to swap? What would, what would you have done? I'd have been, uh, no disrespect to Dave, but I'd have been Jimmy Cagney. I mean, I'd have been, uh, <laughs> I like the old day. I like the, I mean, I've, if someone asked me what I want to be, what area do you want to live in? I either want to be uh, the Jimmy Cagney, you know, or maybe live in a Western. How about being living in a Western? The Western, but in, in all honesty, because I'm like, I liked all the Westerns, our era, that would have been too dirty and people just running up and shooting you in the back and all that. That weren't manly enough for me. I'm with you on dream, dream living in Chicago in the 20s with the clothes and the cars and the wheel and the door and the trilby hats and the crumbies. You know, that tr truly was my era. And whether I would change my life to be Alan, no, I'd rather have been me. Because there's too much hard work goes into what he had to do <laughs> Is that true, Alan? on That's a daily true. basis of I have to go training and do three or four hours running Can about it. I generally would not, I, I'm, I, it's not in me, I'd love to be able to, I envy him for it, but that's the that difference true? between that work? kind of man of and course. a normal man. Yeah, yeah. You, don't yeah. know, you don't know how hard it is. To yeah. I can't imagine, yeah. you know how hard that, I can't imagine that. I can't get out of bed and do two press-ups, let alone get up and sit, go for the five mile run, do the thing, jump, burpees, bump, 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 and all that. That's I couldn't you're doing imagine. Mile an hour down the road. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't run that far. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd have rather been Dave. Uh, in all honesty, you know, I dream about him standing on top of the bus and holding the thing, but in reality, I couldn't do that. Anyone could do this.